This is Wilton Earl. What you're about to hear are excerpts from interviews recorded on South Carolina's death row with mass murderer, serial killer, Donald Henry Pee Wee Gaskins. Pee Wee was born and raised in rural Florence County in eastern South Carolina. These are his memories of childhood. Ever since I can remember, my mother lived with her mother and daddy. There was 13 in the family, eight boys and five girls. Then my mother had uh, this little boy named Bernice who died. Then Marvin, myself, and Perry Lee Inez. Uh, and we all lived there also. So that was uh, about 16 that was living there in one house. But I was the one who the older ones picked on and I was kicked around all the time too. And it made, uh, at night, uh, they would make me take a big old wooden foot to fill it with water and I had to wash everybody's feet for them. And if I did anything that any of my uncles or aunts didn't like, they would take a hedge bush switch or a pear tree sprout or an apple tree sprout. As long as it was a good switch, and they'd tear my back and legs up. It'd be red stripes all over my body and legs. And if my sister told them I had done anything, no matter uh, if I had or I had not, they'd beat hell out of me, and I'd go around the house uh, at the corner and, and start to cry and, uh, and to rub these uh, big red welts on me. She'd come around where I was at, and She'd tell me goody, 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 and, uh, and most of the times I'd slap hell out of her for doing that. And I knew that when I did it, they were going to beat me again. And even, even if I didn't do it, a lot of times she'd run in the house uh, making like she was crying, and she'd tell my mother that I had slapped her, I'd beat her, and they'd come out there and you know, they'd beat me until I couldn't hardly get up. I had red welts all over my th back and everything. And uh, that's the kind of treatment I was got as a childhood. When Pee Wee was executed in South Carolina's electric chair on September 6, 1991, he was 58 years old and had spent more than half of his life in prison. In this excerpt, he is talking about his first prison sentence, prior to which he had already served five years in reform school. I threw a hammer at her and it hit her. I threw the hammer across the room at her and it hit her. And that, that was what that was, and I got six years for that. Well, about five, five years for it, and I cussed the judge and got another year for that. After several more stretches in state and federal penitentiaries, Pee Wee was paroled again, despite his own and the parole board's strong misgivings. And like I say, uh, when I died, I was 68, I was an evil man. A man on the parole board told me, he said, I don't believe you'll be out six months till you kill somebody, but we're going to give you a parole. Here he discusses details of the abduction and torture murder of Peggy Cutno, the crime for which another man, Junior Pierce, was sentenced to life in prison. Junior Pierce did not kill Peggy Cutno. They took Junior Pierce and uh, tried him for that and everything. Uh, he just happened to be an unlucky man. The day she left school, I was working on the ballroom. Peg was drugged and taken to a cement block house about 10 miles out of the country. Uh, that house was empty as for anyone living in it. I rented it for ten dollars a month. It was out in the, the east side of Sumter and to keep some of my furniture and other stuff in. I had several cars parked out there, junk cars they were. Pig Cutno was spread eagle out on the bed. She was handcuffed. Uh, with her hands up over her head to the rounds in the bed there, and her feet was tied out, and she was stripped naked in there. The cruelty with which Pee Wee tortured and murdered his victims earned him the label the meanest man in America, and established for him the bloodiest criminal record in the history of South Carolina. This excerpt demonstrates the way Pee Wee commanded the respect of his fellow inmates on death row. He, he's the kind that thinks that if he asks you to do anything, he's supposed to do it. Well, I'm one that I don't let nobody tell me what I can do and what I can't do. I've gathered that. And he's the one that used to come by my cell and talk about, you know, he was going to kill himself and all that, and I told him he wanted to die so damn bad to, to stay in his cell third when we go to church, and I'd come by and cut his damn throat for him. And he said, you would, wouldn't you? I said, you're damn right. And he never said nothing about wanting to die no more to me. Longer excerpts from interviews with Pee Wee are impossible without subjecting the listener to the obscene language that comprised his vocabulary and permeated his conversations. 
Over a period of six years, serial killer Donald Pee Wee Gaskins committed scores of murders, but he was not arrested until an accomplice to one of his killings led authorities to Pee Wee's private graveyard. Even then, Pee Wee managed to escape South Carolina's electric chair with numerous plea bargains, making deals with authorities to provide information on additional murders, leading them to more and more corpses in exchange for life sentences rather than execution. But Pee Wee could never resist a challenge or the opportunity to commit another murder or to increase his criminal reputation. So while serving numerous life sentences, he accepted an offer of payment to commit an impossible crime. Despite solitary confinement and maximum security, Pee Wee Gaskins murdered a death row inmate, Rudolph Tyner. The following is a telephone conversation between Pee Wee and his outside accomplice, in which Pee Wee is discussing the problems he has encountered in carrying out the murder and what he needs to complete the task. This conversation was tape recorded by Pee Wee. He intended to use it later to blackmail his accomplice, but law enforcement officials found it and used it to convict Pee Wee of first degree murder and bring about his execution. Hello? I have a customer call to Tony from General McCormick. Will you accept? Yes, I will. Thank you. Are you Tony? Yes. Thank you. Tony? Yeah. Jail wanted me to call you, said, Tony, this is Dr. Collin Uh-huh. Yes, sir. We've given that son of a bitch all of it but one dose, and all they're doing is making that son of a bitch sick. We put it in some damn book, put him to drink the other night, and he drank, and two boys drank, and all it was made all three of them sick as hell. Well, I It just make them sick as hell, and that's it. So I come up with something, told him that I would call you if you wanted me and tell you if you'll send it. It can't be no damn making sick on it. I need, I need one electric cap and as much of a stick of damn dynamite as you can get. I'll take a damn radio and rig it into a bomb the way he plugs it up. That son of a bitch will go off and there won't be no damn coming back on that. Okay. So I'll, he, he I'll gonna, get it there. Well, well, we'll work it up. Uh, if we can get a... Electric radio, you know, just got a pretty good size big rent that you can't see in. Yeah. Just take that damn thing and tape it up into something and put it in the front of the speaker up against it and tape it where it won't shake. Yeah. And just put it in an old electric radio that's got a pretty good size speaker in it. And, and mail it to me or even mail it to him. But just make sure, you know, that it looks like it ain't been tampered with or nothing bad. And get it up to him and damn if I don't give it to him and we'll put him in. But I'll furnish a radio that's already in him. Okay. I'll get one of these battery electric types up in one of these old cheap things and put it in and give it to him and when he plugs that son of a bitch up it'll blow him on in the hell. Okay. That's about the best way that I can figure to get him because everything we give him just looks like it makes him sick as hell and that's it. But one electric cap and as much of a stick you can get in and as pure as you can get he told me to call you maybe over the weekend you can find one stick somewhere. And get it to me, and damn if I can't fix him up. Okay, well, uh, I'd, I'd probably get at least plastic explosion. Well, that'd be good. I can handle it as long as I got that electric cap where it'll go off when uh, he plugs it in the wall socket. Uh, all the trouble to be over. If I'd thought about that a long time ago, it'd already been over with. Because he's in a cell by a cell. And it ain't done nothing? That's That's just make him sick as hell. Just make him sick as hell, and he'll look pale as hell for a day or two. And that's it. Give it to him, give it to him. I got about one more dose I'm going to give him in his eggs in the morning. <laughs> that's something that you about run me crazy. Oh, damn, me too. Should I sit up at night hey, morning, worried? He's wanting cigarettes, he's wanting joints, and since he's that, and I've been keeping the son of a bitch pleased. And uh, tonight he says, uh, look here, I need something to eat. I said, well, let me look around and see what I can do. And uh, he said, no, just go ahead and give me something to get me high on. I rounded him up a couple of joints, and that was all I could get him tonight. So I'm going to give him the rest of what I got in his eggs in the morning, but get me one, one stick with well enough to do the job with the plastics, and one like the cap. That's all I need. All right, well, that's, that's stuff that he's got uh, with an arrow on it. Uh-huh. If he'll tell him it's cold, let him snort it, man. That'll put him right on there. All right, uh, I got a little bit of that left. I've been giving it to him and his food and everything else. Like well, it, it, eating that stuff won't help. I told you that he's got to get that in his blood system. If he'll snort it, put right. it in the coat. All right, he, he's real wise on that. He's done that up in New York. He snorted a lot. All right. And so he knows what that is. He would know what that is if he could to snort it, if he could tell any difference in it now. I'll give him the rest of that in the morning. 
Uh, well, that stuff will get old too. No, uh, he won't eat that. I'll get, I'll get it to him, tell him I scored in the morning play, and I'll go ahead and let him snort that. All right. And well, I'll get that stuff going this week, and I can get there, I know where I can get it. Good, good. Just getting enough to do the damn job and listen for the bang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, you can go ahead and send it to him or me. It don't matter. All right. Take care. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye. All right. Goodbye. At the end of our final interview prior to his execution, Pee Wee leaned across the table and spoke directly into the tape recorder. Uh, as I'm getting ready now to call it, uh, until next time, take care. This is Donald Pee Wee Gaskin saying so long for now.